Hello and good afternoon. Um, I'll, I'll introduce us all in a minute, but we're looking at cybersecurity and what the risks and, and what we can do for you. So um, we've got a team of us here um, to help you and I'll, I'll introduce us all um, in the next couple of slides. But we're going to give an introduction to cybersecurity first, then we're going to look at phishing, what it is, how it works, um, and then Tom's going to talk to you about social engineering and recce attacks, and then we'll summarise for you at the end. So um, the staff introductions haven't come up, but if we think about what is cybersecurity and cybercrime, it's crime involving a computer on a network. Um, the computer may have been used in the commission of that crime, or it may be the target. And what we're looking at is people um, getting access to people's resources. So it could harm their security, their financial health. It could be stealing data, manipulating data. And there's lots of different angles for it. Um, there's a study by FishMe, and 91% of successful fiber attacks began with curiosity or fear. Um, or a sense of urgency entice people to want to gain people's personal and business details. So um, phishing is um, a crime which we target um, or target our contacts by email, telephone or text message um, by some posing to be someone that they're not to try and lure you into a sense of full security and then to try and steal data off you such as personally identifiable information, credit card details, passwords and so on. So uh, in a few minutes my colleague Dr Asma Patel is going to talk to you in more detail about phishing and run a little quiz with you. Um, and then she'll hand over to my colleague, Dr. Tomasz Bozikowski, who will look at recce attacks and Phil O'Neill's coming in with us. He's one of our development managers towards the end um, to give you a little bit of a chat. So uh, phishing emails mimic what's going on in, in reality. And they lead you into this full sense of security to believe that it's a business that you trust. And the whole idea is to trick you and to give you personal information away um, or even click on a malicious link that can download malware that can sit and reside in your system and cause damage. Thousands of these attacks um, are launched every day um, and we'll have a look at a few of them as we go, up, go along. So what can you do? Um, stop trusting your emails, basically. Um, they're not always as they seem. The biggest advice we give to anybody is if you're unsure about something or ensure whether it's come from a legitimate source, talk to your information services team, talk to your computer support team. Um, people much rather people be honest and say, look, I'm a bit worried, can I just check this? Then you clicking on something and causing potentially millions of pounds worth of damage. Um, but there are some telltale signs which we can look at um, to help you mitigate against them. And that's what Asma's going to do shortly with you um, and go through some of the more common ones. Um, but if we, before we get to there, passwords is a big bugbear of mine um, when you see how people set passwords up. Lots of organisations say use at least eight characters and the idea is that's when our hashing algorithms work better. And then say you've got to use a lowercase letter, an uppercase letter, a number and or a special character. And that's to make it harder for somebody to guess. So if you look at this little table, if you use just numbers, up to 10 numbers you can gain virtually or guess virtually instantly um, what the passwords are going to be and it's a really quick way of getting in even with up to um, 12 numbers you, it's only taking a, a decent hack of 25 seconds to get in if you use lowercase letters only you know we're talking nine lowercase letters and it's two minutes and they've got your password so this is where we come in using these more complex passwords and using words that aren't a word in itself. So like for example, in the first initials of a number of random words you've put together, because it takes them a lot longer to get your password. Um, a lot of people tend to use the partners or their siblings or the child's name. And you know, you just being someone in a pub or pretending to be a sales engineer and chatting to people, it's amazing how much information people can glean off you. Um, it, a lot of people use the football team they support, for example, or the motor racing team they support in F1. So we need to be careful to use some obscure words. One of the main attacks people do is what we call a dictionary attack, where they buy a dictionary of known words, and it just pushes the words in as the password field over and over again rapidly until it makes a hit. 
So some people decide to use, do you know, I'll use a German word and an English word, but you can get multilingual tran, um, dictionaries now where you have multiple words in there from lots of different languages. So this is where we need to start using these other characters to help protect ourselves. A lot of people see it as hassle uh, when they have to generate a new password, but you know what, it's going to stop you getting attacked, doesn't it? Um, so if we look at this as an example, this is an example of um, from an email that was sent to me a few weeks ago. And I looked at them and thought they're very, very similar. But the difference is this one letter here. If you can see the font is different to in the top one. And that font there is actually a Cyrillic letter. So if I clicked on it, it took me to a spoof website. It wasn't the website I was supposed to be getting to. And this is how they're trying to get around it because when we read these URLs quickly, we don't notice that change of font. You know, and some people might think, oh, well, I just had a change of font, it'd be all right. Being a Cyrillic letter, it actually takes you to a completely different website. So it's something really, really simple um, to look into. You know, th this is hackers, the myth. Everyone thinks, you know, it's people sitting in a dark room, like off that good old film from years ago, The Matrix. And you've got this really super powerful computer and they watch the CIS programs and all the hacker programs on the telly and people are getting to systems in like two minutes. It, it doesn't happen. People don't get into systems that quite quite so quickly. Um, but this is, is the myth. And this is what we've all been bought into because been watching a lot of the Hollywood blockbuster movies. Um, the reality is things like social media. So all these were taken off, um, believe it or not, my Facebook site. And these come up regularly. And it's, if you had to marry your spouse where you met them, where would your wedding have been? Uh, your poor name is your middle name and the first car you had. And all of these, believe it or not, are what a lot of people use as part of their passwords. OK, also, they're um, quite often security questions you use when you sign up for things like online banking or setting an account up with Amazon or another online service. And we all take part of these because we think they're just a little bit of fun. And they always appear to come from different people. The reality is it's probably the same person sending out multiple questions and what they're doing is recording to see if you're consistent with your responses. If you're consistent with your responses, you know, subconsciously that's what you'll enter as a security question when you're setting, setting up an online account. So um, this is one that came to me, um, telling me about my gas account, saying I was refundable for a t nearly a £2,500 refund. And I thought, yay, £2,500 back in my pocket and then when I looked at the top I saw British Gas UK it's actually British Gas PLC but if you look at the email it came from it was test at premierconcrete.biz and that kind of rang, rang alarm bell so what's the first thing I did deleted it and mocked it as spam so if it ever came back from that email address again it just went into a spam folder and got deleted this is how clever people are being and it's something we've really got to to look out for, and as I was going to explain this a lot more in a few minutes. Um, so if you think about setting an online count up, some of the typical security questions they ask you are, what's your favourite colour? And I'd reply back, eagle. What's your first school you went to? Purple. What's the first car you owned? A pumpkin. And I remember going to a bank and they were asking me these questions, and they said, but well, that isn't a colour, that isn't a school, and that isn't a car, and I said, exactly. You know, if I'd answered favourite colour purple, just because it's written down, like purple isn't my favourite colour. But if I wrote down purple, it's an easy one for somebody to guess because there's only a finite number of colours. You know, first school, you can pick that up off things like census reports and social media. First car, you saw those pictures off Facebook. What's the first car you owned? So I purposely chose answers that had nothing to do with the question whatsoever because it makes the it makes it a lot harder for the attacker to come in and try and guess what your responses are. Um, the bank manager I was doing this with was just completely, you've lost me, I, I really don't get this. But you know, those quizzes on social media, um, as we've just seen on Facebook, it's so easy to get this information off people because they answer these quizzes that they see on social media, okay? So it's something we need to um, be wary of. So I think this is where we hand over to Asma, isn't it? So if you want to take Thank over, yeah. sure. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. So, uh, Chris, do you mind um, moving to the next slide? 
Yep. Yes. So, well, hello everyone. My name is Asma Patel. Chris already introduced me. So I'm going to just give you some practical examples of what sort of emails and URLs you need to be very careful uh, while using, um, you know, any any electronic device or e electronic communication in future. So first of all, what is phishing? Phishing is just trying to, uh, as Chris already explained, but in simple words, just to make you believe that uh, the fraud page or fraud URL or an email is is a legitimate one. So if you look at this page, it has a Safarsha University logo. It has hello and. Uh, there is also uh, uh, the email starts with staffs ends with staffs.ac.uk. So one must think that probably this is a legitimate page. It's it has the logo and it shows the email. But don't be mis misled. You should also check the URL. So if you go to the URL um, on this page, it's not nothing related to Staffordshire University. It's completely for it is forums completely different URL. So this is an indication. This is just an attempt to fool you or uh, a phishing attempt. So if you can move to the next page, please, Chris. Thanks. So this is a phishing page. It's not a legitimate Staffordshire login page. Another example here, some, some cases happened within uh, uh, Staffordshire University uh, security uh, data that we have analyzed. So we've got some screenshots from internal uh, emails that we have captured. So first one, if you see, it's first one is also a phishing attempt just to lure users to click on some URL. So you have to be very careful from where the email has uh, come, what sort of URL uh, it is displaying before you click on it and also any other uh, additional information that can help you make a decision whether this is a legitimate email or it's it's a phishing attempt. So these are two examples which after assessing carefully, it was highlighted that these are two phishing emails. Sometimes you have very um, strong phishing filters in your out Outlook and uh, internal whatever security uh, devices or monitoring system that you practice, but some some of the other times you you will end up with receiving some email just because some signatures are not known or there are some new attempts uh, that has been used for phishing. So you have to be very careful. And if you come across anything that is phishing, you always have to report it, as Chris mentioned before. So what we will do now, we are going to uh, do a, a small quiz, and that will help you. Uh, assess some sort of emails and uh, uh, URLs that are very common examples of uh, phishing and uh, some some signature that it is not a legitimate uh, uh, communication. So can we move to the next slide, please? Yes, we'll have to open this quiz. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> Thank you. So we are going to take this interesting quiz. So just, this is just to help you assess uh, your understanding of phishing. So, Chris, if you can please put your name. It's it's a Google quiz, so you have, you, you can trust putting your initials, your your actual information on this. So, if if everybody wants to, uh, pra, you know, practice this on your mobile phone or on your PC, please feel free to do it while I am explaining. So, first question, if you notice, it's a bit very small screen, so I, ha I have to go very close to my laptop yes so if you see this is an email from luke johnson so first thing you will check is the email this you always should check whether it's a legitimate one or not so it says gmail.com so it sounds uh, there is no issue then you look at the doc file which is attached so if you can hover to the doc file it will show uh, at the bottom if you see there is http forward slash drive dash dash google.com. So this could be an um, uh, a sign that why it starts with drive dash dash google.com. Then uh, because any, uh, any Google, uh, any uh, doc file which is shared with Google Drive, it should always start with Google first. And if there is a, a, a misled URL, then you have to be very careful. So in this case, we will say this is not a legitimate, it's a phishing attempt. So if you can please click on phishing. So it says and show me, it will just help you. 
understand is because drive dash dash google.com is not a proper url if it's a google if the document is shared by google drive it should be google dot com forward slash drive so this is an indication that it is not a legitimate email so if you can move to the next part of the quiz thanks so in this case uh, of course you should check the email then uh, the logo of any company and also if there are any links you have to hover on the link first before clicking on it because it could be a malware or any malicious link so if you see it says efax but if you notice uh, you are uh, sorry the email it says no reply reply and the spelling is completely different it is not matching with the logo so this is an immediate indication that this could be a phishing attempt so we will say it's a phishing um, email it's not a legitimate one it should be correct so again if you click on show me it will show you why so it's because it's completely different than efax and also uh, the url was different than the 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 efax spelling which is mentioned in the email and in the url so if you move to the next quiz thanks next yeah even here it says mail are you 382.co so this doesn't look a standard url so it is complete it is an attempt to fool you if you click on it so it could be a potentially a malware now here it says uh, an email from a friend it says gmail.com so email looks okay but when you click on this uh, for when you hover on this photo you will check the, the link says drive.google.com dot download so this doesn't look a legitimate url because it should if it's from google it should always end with google.com forward slash and then it should uh, follow up with some sub urls so this is an indication that this could be a phishing email so if we'll click on phishing so the email is right but the url looks uh, in a, uh, incorrect so show me let's check the answer so if you say styles.net also here the url said styles.net and then if you click next okay now here it's an email from dropbox so first the email looks fine it says dropbox then no reply at dropboxmail.com this looks fine if you click on upgrade just hover you shouldn't click sorry and see the url it says https so it has security forward slash www.dropbox.com and then the url ends with a forward slash and then it starts with a sub domain by so this looks fine to me because it starts with a security https then www.dropbox.com forward slash and then buy so i think this looks a legitimate one so i would go for legitimate is this right oh oh that's correct so show me if you click on show me please something that is come up here ah, sorry Thank you. Sorry. Sorry. Taking, there is a delay. I think. So it says Dropbox, uh, dropboxmail.com. So if you click next, again, here, legitimate because it's, it ends dropbox.com forward slash and then it starts with a subdomain by. So if you click next and we go to the next question. Yes. So there are only three more. So I'll go i won't repeat the same once if there is something new then i'll highlight that so here again we look at sharon uh, she sent an email from a school and there is a pdf attached now if you notice there is any attachment and you're not sure about the person who has who has sent you the email then you should definitely not download or click on it and especially if you look at the format it says f dot uh, i'm looking at the pdf so if, if it says f dot a dot r then dot pdf so this doesn't look right because dot should always be used um once in a file format so this could potentially be a malware then we look at the email it starts with um dot, it ends with dot org now if it's a school uh, it usually goes uh, with um ac dot uk or any educational 
uh, URL format. So this is an indication so why Sharon is not using university, uh, sorry, a school domain. So this potentially looks that there is a phishing attempt. So we will click on phishing and let's check. Thank you. So show me. Yes, it says westmountschool.org. It should not be org. It, if it's a school, then it should have educational uh, URL. So for example, for Staffordshire University, we use staffs.ac.uk. We don't use org. And uh, next, if you click next, thank you. Yes, also PDF, it doesn't um, look right because there are many dots. You should only, if there is a PDF, it should on, on, always have one single dot, but this, this looks, that's why it's a phishing attempt. So next. So this one is an email from Google, no reply, google.support. Now this is the first indication here, why support? Why there is no end domain like so google.com, .co.uk or something, but support doesn't look right. So that's an indication. This could be a malicious email, a phishing attempt. Uh, if you check if there's any URL highlighting, if you who were at change password, yeah. Look at this URL. It starts with myaccount.google.com dash security. Uh, it's a very long URL. I don't, I wouldn't trust this one. As I said, uh, legitimate, uh, URL will always end by uh, my account, maybe google.com forward slash, and then a subdomain should start. So this is an indication that it's a phishing attempt. So we will go for phishing. Thank you, Chris. Show me again, the same Google support next. And it also says security.org, which is not legitimate. Why would Google use org, google security.org? Next. Yeah, it's a good point because org oh. is usually for um, charity organisations. Sure. But as I said before, there's not no .uk on the end or um, another country. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Chris. So this one it says no reply at Google dot support. I think this is a phishing because if you look at the email. You see google.com, you should be google.co.uk, but support is not a domain, uh, not a uh, standard practice while you are um, using any email. So this looks phishing to me. When you click, click on change password, the link is HTTPS. It has security, google.com forward slash. Um, oh, it's using tinyurl.com. So it's basically, it's using a tiny URL portal to reduce the size of this um, of of the actual URL. So why it is using tiny URL? So that is also an indication that this this could be a phishing attempt. And the first indicator is dot support, and the second why to use tiny URL. So it, it tiny URL is a tool which is used to reduce URL to a smaller. Um, S -s smaller one, I would say. So I would say phishing attempt, click, and that is correct. Show me, perfect. So we know now is support shouldn't be a legitimate email. If you click next, yes, uh, pass why to use tiny URL. That's another indication it's a phishing attempt. Next. So tiny URL, another common platform is Bitlily. That is also bitly so used a lot. Uh, and then here it says Google. So it says Chris Howard's email at staffs.ac.uk. And it says wants to. And this is an app. So you, this is basically third party, party authorization. You should you get this a lot nowadays. So if you click hover on tip ID, any URL doesn't know, but it is actually an application. And if is there any other, uh, you, yeah, at the bottom, it says trip8.com looks, the email, uh, the URL looks okay to me. It says HTTPS, so there is a security. Then forward slash www.tripit.com. Again, this looks fine. So I 
think everything is okay. This is just a third party app trying to authenticate the user using Google account. So this this is a normal practice. So I would say legitimate. So yeah, that's correct. Perfect. Show me. So again, the same because it's um, it's an app. And there is no, no nothing wrong using third party uh, third party app using Google to authenticate users, and it also you the URL looks fine. So I would say wow. next it that's why it is. So we've got all answers right. So even if someone didn't get their answers right, I've done this quiz many times. So I'm sure I'll I'll score almost eight out of eight. So if we go back to the slides please chris thank you so the point here is to make you aware what you need to always uh, check before um, receiving any when you receive any email and you're not sure about the the sender or the files attached or uh, and any promotional emails that you get so first thing email you have to check if it ends with .co.uk or where any legitimate uh, ending of an email then you check uh, if there is any attachment if there is an attachment what sort of namings that attachment has hover over it and if you think the url is not um, making any sense it, it has it is using tiny url bitly or uh, it's it uses something like google dot support or anything similar you should not open it again as chris said you should uh, a report as uh, spam and how you can do that so if you uh, on any uh, a, a internal outlook you're using or any mail application that you're using it will always have report message so this one so you should always uh, when before opening that message once you receive it click on it I mean just mark it and then report the message to your internal security team and then they will assess further what sort of spamming um, methods have, have been used and you will save uh, the, the organization a lot of hassle so you have to all you should always report not just delete it but you should also report the message so um, the system can learn new signatures if there are anything missing from the security devices and this is how the small click will help um, your organization to be secure and protect these sort of uh, spamming emails in future so very simple just report and there you go then and, and never click on anything that you are not sure about it is always um to be safe than sorry so that's all thanks chris so maybe uh, thomas yeah sure thanks thomas you can take over thank you thank you asma so uh, we'll be looking at uh, some of the uh, reconnaissance techniques um, that are typically used by uh, malicious hackers um, at the beginning. So typically it's the first stage, but before we do that, let's have a quick look at the data breach. So uh, a data breach is a, a security incident um, where uh, information held by an organization are stolen or accessed without an authorization. Um, and as you can see, this is just um, one of a security report from, uh, this is from the IBM uh, 2020. So uh, as you can see, uh, you look at those numbers, it's a quite big problem. Um, you can see on average uh, total cost, uh, that was 3.86 uh, million pounds. Um, you can see that the healthcare sector uh, is targeted in particular, so 7.1. Uh, million pounds here because obviously uh, this is where they can access um, personal information um, and then sell them on the dark net. Uh, one of the examples you can see, um, this is just from um, uh, from BBC, uh, if you click on that link, uh, so that will take you to BBC website uh, and you can read about this story. So this is Marriott Hotel and they were fined by uh, ICO, so Information Commissioner's Office um 18.4 million pounds um for data breach so basically they didn't secure the system the, the, the network uh, and because of that um the data breach occurred um, and uh, obviously the customers data email addresses credit card numbers 
um, uh, were stolen. Um, and obviously Marriott didn't, did not secure that, uh, uh, and in that case they were fined. So it's a, it's a big problem and obviously um, something we need to look at. So um, if you look how these things happen, um, who is responsible? Um, yes, typically it's external um, attackers, so someone from outside the organization, uh, but um, it could be someone internal as well, um, so employee. Uh, also, it could be accidental data loss, so um, uh, someone published those, those data um, accidentally, basically, um, on, a, on a public domain on the internet, and that will be also classified as a data breach. Um, I've got some two links uh, if you want to have a um, sort of look what you could do uh, to, to secure your organization. Um, so you can look at um, ICO website, uh, so ICO uh, for Small Medium Enterprise Web Hub, um, where they will provide you uh, sort of information and guidance how, how to protect um, sort of your organization from uh, data breach and as well um, NCSC, Cyber Essentials. That's also a good source um, of information that, that you can sort of explore. Um, so we'll look at, um, in a moment, um, at, as I say, at uh, reconnaissance stage. Um, but typically any type of um, attack will start with some kind of social engineering attack. Um, and this is basically to trick you into providing sort of more information, more sensitive data um, um, to those malicious hackers. So what they try to do is, as Chris mentioned and Asma, send you those uh, phishing emails, pretending to be someone else. So you can see some of the examples of social engineering techniques. Uh, we've got in, in impersonation, so pretending to be someone else, for example, a system administrator, um, and asking you for a password. Uh, deception, so joining company as an employee, that also could happen. Um, and we've got also reverse social engineering, so creating a problem, uh, for example, dosing uh, a company, and then at the same time, sort of advertising, so uh, pretending to be an expert, um, uh, someone who can help to protect, protect uh, from those type of attack. Um, so let's look at reconnaissance. Um, so this is typically the first uh, stage um, of an attack, of a cyber attack. Um, and the aim of basically of this, of this stage is to gather as much information as possible about the target. So it could be, it could be individual, it could be you, it could be um, a, a company, uh, so it could be a, a, some kind of organization as well, that could be also a target. Um, uh, this is um, typically uh, called uh, uh, passive information gathering. So we've got passive and active. Um, so passive is um, when we talk about passive information gathering. Um, this means is without alerting a victim. Um, so basically, there is no direct interaction with a victim, with a target. Um, so at this stage, they don't send any emails, they don't scan a network, they don't call you or anything like that. This is basically whatever um, malicious hackers uh, can find about you or your organization on a public uh, domain on the internet. So this is called passive. Um, so example could be, uh, which we will go through in a moment, uh, some of those examples. Um, could be basically um, uh, using uh, Google search engine, uh, typing your name and, and see what they can find about you. Uh, you don't know that, obviously, that someone is typing that in the Google search engine. Um, so you, that's, what, that's why we call it passive. Um, before I move to some more sort of uh, more advanced techniques, obviously one of those techniques is dumpster diving, which means basically looking at an a sort of papers left near the printer or any papers, so sort of hard copies you sort of throw to the bin and the bills uh, because they will contain information uh, such as address, uh, could be telephone number, could be uh, email address, your office number and so on. 
So dumpster and diving will belong as well to this category. So it's very important that you, whatever you throw, whatever paper sort of waste you throw away, and that's obviously um, uh, either shredded. So there are some um, um, tools that you can use um, that will shred this securely, obviously, and no one will be able to retrieve any data from it. So the first thing, obviously, is uh, um, um, each uh, well, an organization will have a web presence. Um, there will be a website. So this will be typically the first um, thing they will look at. Um, and if you look, for example, at our website, you will be able to find information such as uh, employee names. So you know, Chris or me or Asma, that will be there. It will be our email addresses, telephone numbers. Um, office uh, number and so on and that could be used basically uh, to create those phishing emails uh, so they will have they, will, they could use my email address and basically email me um, um, uh, you know some kind of phishing um, uh, email um, what else they can do um, um, that's obviously one thing the other thing they could do they could look at the uh, the HTML code of the website so uh, Sometimes uh, developers they left comments, uh, which again they could include uh, some sensitive data or passwords. It happened, uh, happened in the past, so um, they could also do that. Look at the source code, look at the HTML code, and see whether there's anything there that could be used. There are some tools that uh, are very, very uh, sort of sophisticated tools like um, WGET, for example, which allow you to download entire website. Um, you, you've got different settings there, so uh, obviously it will be detected by our um, sort of security system that someone is downloading quite a lot of data at once. Uh, but those sort of tools are very clever; they can sort of um, download um, a bit of data, a bit of data, wait a bit of time, and then do it that again. So uh, just to tr they try to sort of tr uh, um, evade our systems. The other thing you can look um, uh, on our website is job adverts. Um, not necessarily on our website, but um, uh, there will be also um, some other website where, where uh, you can look for the jobs. But obviously, every university will have a uh, careers link, and you will see uh, job adverts. And uh, you will be surprised that you can actually find quite a lot of uh, useful information there as well. As you can see on this example, we've got um, just below, we've got the statement Argent here. So, um, which means basically um, looks like there was a shortage of staff at the moment. Um, so, they're looking for two support engineers in this case. Um, and, and again, that could just indicate that maybe no one is monitoring this network um, at, the, at the moment. Um, some of the job adverts will list um, uh, tools or software hardware that is used by a company. So if we can see here that, um, for example, just this, I just pick up one, like monitoring tools, for example, here you can see uh, that they listed like uh, three sort of two names here. Uh, and again, uh, looking at that, I will probably just have a quick look if there's any vulnerability related to this tool. Um, and maybe if there is, uh, I could maybe exploit it. So as you can see, just from the job adverts, uh, you will be able to extract quite a lot of sensitive data. Um, so we can see here some other things like uh, VLANs, uh, load balancers that are they use. Looks like they've got some kind of virtualization, uh, some kind of cloud uh, also here. So they're using Amazon and VMware products. Looks like there is some kind of Linux. Um, operating system used by this company, and so on. Um, so, um, just coming back to this job adverts, uh, obviously these days we probably will not list that. Uh, this is a very old job advert, I would say. Um, and things obviously move on. We've got new um, you know, stop, uh, policies in place, so we cannot publish certain things online anymore. But um, Obviously, it is the internet, and we can actually go back in time. And if you click on this link, archive.org, which is um, um, sort of a way of trying to see um, or to look at uh, 
uh, a website from the past. Um, so it was a research project. Uh, uh, it's a research project. So they archive back to 1996. Um, it's not every day that you will have a snapshot, but you might um, you might have a snapshot every every month, for example. Uh, and if you type our website www.stabs.ac.uk, then you will see that um, they've got snapshots, uh, obviously, from the past. Uh, and why this is useful, as I say, because we don't publish some data now, but maybe we did that two three years ago, and you can look at this, um, and you will still be able to find it there. Okay, so very, very interesting thing that you can explore. Um, the other technique um, that is used, um, uh, again, for passive, remember passive, uh, I'm not contacting a target yet. I'm just sort of using, as you can see, uh, looking at the website and the job adverts. Anyone can do that. There's no, nothing suspicious here. Uh, is Google hacking? So I'm using a Google search engine. Um, and again, Google Search Engine is quite powerful, especially if you use specific um, sort of uh, commands we, that they called advanced operators. Um, and using those operators um, is very useful because you will be able to narrow down your search. So if you type um, Staffordshire University and I don't know um, some kind of keywords they're looking for, like login, uh, passwords. Um, then obviously that will uh, result in you know a million of uh, results. Uh, but if you just narrow it down with some of those, um, uh, which you can test yourself with some of those um, 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 advanced operators, for example, site. So you can put staffs as UK. I, mean, I just want to look at this specific domain from staff as UK. Maybe I want to look at only PDF files. So you can add extension, for example, PDF. And then you know, using specific keywords, that probably will narrow it down to very, you know, to, to probably I don't know, let's say 100 for example results, and you will be able to go through that, um, and maybe there will be something useful. Okay, so again, Google search engine very very useful tool. Um, okay, so that was just some of the examples, as I say, of the passive one, uh, and if you want to look at some of those links in that PowerPoint. Uh, and explore them and uh, some of those techniques you, you know um maybe using your your own uh company you will see though you can extract quite a lot of details and just coming back to my point and that's why we we've got quite a lot of those data breach uh recently um because it's so easy basically to create those social engineering um uh, sorry uh, phishing email phishing emails okay so i'll pass it to chris yeah, what, what Tom was saying is absolutely correct. But also from more more active point of view, um, people target others in stressful situations. So, for example, um, in an airport queue to check your bags in. Um, a number of years ago, I was out in Berlin um, working. I was waiting to fly back to the UK, and, and security was really, really strict because um, Barack Obama was visiting just at the end of his tenure as president of the USA. And I got to this guy in the queue, and he's a bit agitated, and he's a bit nervous about flying. And he told me his kids' names, his family name, his wife's name, what school his kids are going to, which school his eldest daughter was going to as a university. And um, after about half an hour, I knew an immense amount of details about him. And I said, what do you do for a job? He goes, I'm a security engineer. And I said, well, you just told me all these details. You know, I, I do hope you've not used any of his passwords or credentials to log on to your site. No, 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 I haven't. And you could tell he, he couldn't get away to go and change all his passwords. Um, it's the same in coffee shops, any queuing system or in bars. If people are suddenly paying you kind of an unusual amount of attention, be careful of the questions they're asking you because they're just building this information up, as Tom was saying, you know, that like we're dumpster diving because they can add all these little bits of information together. And that's what gets into the end point of... Um, where they're going to start doing attacks. So it's just being wary. Um, what stressful situations are a very common one to do. Um, I've heard of people doing in doctors' waiting rooms and things like this because people are nervous. So they'll talk to people to take the mind off what's going to happen. So it's just something to be careful for. Um, so it was a very whistle-stop tour giving you an idea of, of what things to look for, in particular with phishing and reconnaissance attacks. 
Um, it's a massive, massive field, um, but there's lots of little things we can do um, to make it safer, such as um, that quiz Asma showed you, um, just checking the email address, where it came from, looking at the links, does the URL make sense? Um, if you don't have a cross-cut shredder, be careful where you're disposing of um, commercial materials. Uh, make sure your company has a security policy. A big one we talk about is educating users. Explain to them why it is dangerous. Um, make sure that all your systems accept all the updates and patches pushed out um, so they are constantly updated against attacks. And, and this is the big one. If in doubt, ask. Don't be afraid to ask suppliers and vendors. Um, we were trialling some equipment we were going to buy for a project. Um, using what they call the IEEE A2.1X authentication system. And we couldn't get it to work. And I rang the vendors up and said, I can't get A2.1X working. And they said, well, what number are you using for X? It isn't a number you choose. A2.1X is an international standard for authentication. And it was at that point, I lost faith in that organization. And we didn't go, go with them buying the equipment off them because they didn't understand security protocols. Um, but, but ask, that's the main thing. If in doubt, ask. Okay, so thank you for watching. Um, we push stuff out on social media quite a lot. Um, and there's our Twitter feeds and our Instagram feed. Um, I've just put out that in the Guardian League table, we've just been ranked fourth best in the country for satisfaction with our teaching, which is really good out of 108 institutions for teaching computing. Um, but yeah, we, we push up that out and stuff that's going on in the news about security all of the time. Um, so now I need to hand over to Phil. Thank you very much, um, all of you, for that, that presentation. That was very useful, and I'm sure all the audience would, would agree with that. Um, just to introduce myself, folks, my name is Phil O'Neill. I'm a um, development manager within Knowledge Exchange and Enterprise. So I work with businesses in the local area to find out how they can best partner with universities. So I'm just jumping on for a few minutes just to run through the different support which is available for businesses. Um, so if you are a you know someone who deals this kind of thing within your business, or if you're the type of person who is interested in doing it personally, we basically got funding support available for the prototyping and the development of new products within businesses. So if you've got an idea for an innovative solution, please feel free to get in touch with us so we can talk about what, what them options are. We've also got funded support for innovations in transport, logistics and mobility. So that's in an area called intelligent mobility. But if you are working in a sector such as transport or logistics, please get in touch with us. We may have some opportunities for you there to partner with the university with some more innovative solutions. We've also got office space available through our incubation and startup hatchery. Uh, and with the um, office facilities, you get access to all technology facilities that are in the university as well. So that's another great opportunity if you're looking to change, expand on your current office space. Um, and we've got we've also got training opportunities. So we've got skills and knowledge development through continued professional development programs and apprenticeships. So if you are interested in upskilling personally or a member of your team is looking to upskill, please feel free to get in touch to get an idea about what the university has to offer for you. And then we can also support you with the hiring of student and graduate talent. Um, and then the, the final point on that, I have touched on that a little bit, but ultimately we are here to help to support large employers as well with innovation support, but that's small, medium or large employers. If your business wants to innovate, try new things with innovative solutions to you know, save money or generate new income, and you've got an idea, but you need that you know, academic support please feel free to get in touch. I'm sure we can um, go through some, some suitable options for you. Go have the next slide, please, Chris. That's the last one I've got, Phil. Yeah, okay, brilliant. So, and then, so as I said, I mentioned a lot about contacting the Zen folks. So as you can see there, the, the email address is the employers at staffs.ac.uk. Um, drop us an email. If, if, you, if, if any of them things I've mentioned uh, tr trigger an idea in your mind, whether it be the, the CPD opportunity to, tr to, to you know, do, do new training programmes or whether it be to innovate within your business, please feel free to get in touch and we can arrange a bit of a one-to-one -to, -one to go through the options. Um, just before we finish, I've had a question uh, in, in, in the box. Um, and the question is, uh, so I'm from Greece. Could I apply somewhere for a master's degree in cybersecurity? Yeah, sure. Um, there's two options available. Um, you could apply and come and do your 
master's degree in cyber security here on campus in Staffordshire or we run it as a distance learning course so you could take it whilst you're in Greece do it as part-time distance learning. Brilliant. Uh, the next question, uh, and this is one which I'm going to have to answer, so it bear me one second, but the question is, how can I access the cybersecurity CPD course? And what we do with that one basically is we identify the eligibility for the business or the person who's applying, and we'll do that through the employers at staffs.ac.uk email address. So um, that email address is just on the screen now, so if you um, contact us on there, we can, we, can, we can run you through the process. Uh, the next question is if any of you as experts have been ever been fooled by any kind of cyber attack and did it give you any insights you didn't previously have so i'm actually quite looking forward to the response to this one I'm not admitting to anything <laughs> yeah. um, i think everybody at some point has you know come very very close to clicking on something they should they shouldn't do um we had an email around recently um from the university college union um people so ucu is, is the union academics can join um as a you know as, as, as teachers basically um and they're asking to confirm which department and what your full name was i just thought mm, it's a little bit dodgy it's been reported as spam email so and that came yesterday um i must admit it had the proper ucu logo on it at first glance, the email address looked right and, until I had a proper look and it was, as Asma said, it was missing the final part of the domain. So um, it didn't have the UK on the end. So um, I, very, I must have I very nearly clicked on it, um, but then changed my mind at the last minute and it's been reported as, as spam. Um, the examples I gave at the start of the presentation, um, all of those have what come to my um, personal email addresses. So, um, the one like for example from british gas that was one that came to me this um this that one this came from um a residential care home that i have some dealings with um called maybank over in, in cheshire um and they usually email me and their emails end in this here and then i got one one day and i don't know why it stood out that this was a different letter in, in you know different font um, and that was just before I had that about three or four months ago. Um, these are all taken off my Facebook page and I get these constantly. Um, and it's just because I'm so used to them now, I just think, mm, yeah, get lost. <laughs> You're just taking the mickey. And this was one that I got in June um, from British Gas. The first thing, the reason I looked at to start off with is British Gas don't supply my gas. You know, and that, that was the first giveaway. Um, but I think all of us have um, been caught up at some point or other. Um, and it, it, it's, it's just been mindful. I managed to close the presentation down now. Yeah, I think um, what, what you said there, Chris, about, you know, everyone probably coming close at some point is, is definitely right. And hopefully, if ever you do get caught out, you, you sort of realise the, the very last minute when the pages start looking a little bit more um, fishy. Um, pun intended. So, yeah, uh, I have had a note to say that we, we haven't got any more questions. Um, so, have you got anything else you'd like to add just before we finish, guys? Um, if, if anyone's got any concerns or any worries or wants any further information, please do contact us. Um, I can quite happily get back in touch with you and perhaps set a meeting up or chat with you on my email if you need anything. Um, you know, we're, we're quite happy to give some advice out and for the future. But otherwise, um, quite often, especially on emails, it will say urgent and quite often in bold letters and capital letters to make it sound really, really urgent. Ignore it. Just take your time and think carefully and, and don't put yourself in a potential situation um, where, where you could um, cause yourself trouble down the line. I, I think it, it is about educating and just taking your time and being, being slow and thinking carefully about what you're clicking on. But otherwise, thank you very much for joining us um, um, and hopefully we'll talk again sometime in the future.